Welcome along guys, back to the garage, back to the Hypermotard build. Appreciate having you here. Flies. Again, thanks everyone for your comments, suggestions from the previous video. Really appreciated. Today, we're gonna to be really just carrying on with the stripping. I'm gonna show you some of the new bits I now have. My, uh, my Sato rear sets have arrived, so I'm gonna show you those quickly. Oh, it's quite exciting. Rut, 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 roll the intro. Oh, I've got bags and bags of goodies. So basically, I have my Sato rear sets arrive now. This is them. They're the uh, silver versions. I was going to go black, but I thought, you know what, the silver versions are actually on offer at the moment, silver or gold. So I went for the slightly cheaper ones, the silver, but I want to keep some silver on the bike, so I think it'll look rather jazzy. The standard ones are sort of a, a painted silver. These are a proper silver. I've also got the silver heel guards that go with them and the, cl the clutch, no, the, uh, the front sprocket cover. They're beautifully made these Sato rear sets, so I'm really looking forward to getting those on. But of course, that's not gonna to happen today. That's gonna to be a few episodes away until we start putting this thing back together. So let's get on with the stripping. So as a quick recap, the fuel tank is off. I've also now drained the fuel from this. So what I've actually ordered as well is the, the fuel pump has an internal fuel filter. So I've ordered a new fuel filter and we'll actually take the pump out of the tank and change that filter, make sure you know everything's decent, replace any of the, the bolts, the rusty old bolts which are left in that. That was a pig to get off. A lot of people saying, hang on a minute, you said you got the manual. Why don't you just read the manual? That'll make things a hell, lot, hell of a lot easier. But I'm a man. I don't read the manual unless I get stuck. But I should have really read the manual. But what's the fun in that? I like to play and mess around and find out how things go come apart. So with that sort of attitude, let's get stuck into the airbox. Now the airbox, as I showed you last week, is absolutely filthy. A lot of this filth, I actually think, is mould. I think this is part of the reason why the engine is in such bad condition with the paint flaking. I think this bike has been stored in a damp shed a damp garage and this is what we're seeing here on the airbox it's actually damp like almost sort of mildew on the on the airbox so i'm hoping the filter isn't going to be clogged i hope it's just like this because it's been in the mildew and, and stored badly all right let's carry on and go deeper into the airbox and see what horrors <laughs> we're going to find in there little box of horrors Doesn't want to come out. Surely that's meant to now lift out. Ah, there we go. Oh, she comes. Oh. So actually, as I thought, the actual filter, sorry, it's the inside we should be looking at, that it's not too bad. I don't think that filter has done that many miles. I think it's just the fact the airbox is so bad is due to the fact the bike was stored somewhere damp. It's actually pretty clean inside as well, so that is also good news. I'm just having a look to see actually how you get the filter off the bike, and it looks like it's obviously held onto the throttle bodies with two big Jubilee clips. Um, there's probably some other bolt somewhere. I can't bother to crack the manual out. Let's just see if it comes off. Lazy man. Drop the rectifier off to get in there, I think. On. I'll just drop that down out of the way a bit for now. Another one. Brum, brum, brum. Let's get him out. Ta da! So there we go, under the airbox. No, I'm not too bad. Some of the uh, the throttle bodies are a little bit dirty. I, I could 
strip all that down and send them off maybe to be ultrasonically cleaned. These are the, this is the fuel line, so these are the lines which I said have the factory fitted clips, like the crimp clips, which you have to cut to remove. And then that's the other one for the other throttle body, and then that's the return line to the tank. So that's the, the fuel line coming in, and out back to the tank, or the other way around. Now so you can take that whole fuel line off here. But I'll probably just leave it all connected. The rectifier out. I've just taken a load more pictures of the way all the wiring is rooted in here so I can uh, get things back in again. So I think we're disconnect. The fuel lines are here, down here. Oh, they're dripping again. Oh, dripping everywhere. The throttle bodies are coming loose now. So I think I disconnect the throttle cables. There we go, throttle cables disconnected. There we go. Okay, we've got to connect to this side for the throttle position sensor. Pretty good nick though, all the throttle body really. The injector wiring, how the injectors come off. How to remove injector wiring. Hi, Martin here. I'm working Get to the on point, my, uh, Martin. Get to the point. Here. That's what they call this, it's an EV6 type connector. Different sort. Yeah. How to remove motorcycle fuel injector wiring. This is Andy DIY. I'm going to show you how to remove and Andy, to the point. fuel injectors on a 675 trip. Ooh. I'm not sure what the sensor is. I don't know the <sighs> motorcycle here, but it's just an attachment point. Just Get to the box. point. What you want to do is unplug that. You take the top of this off, multiple screws all the way around. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Useless. I think you have to do something. I think that clip comes off in some way. I think this whole thing lifts up. I want to say this lifts up. Yeah, that, that, that piece clips around the top. I'm sure there's a better way of doing it than that. There we go. Messy way of doing it, but we got it off. Let's get that out of the way. So there we have the mouth of the engine, of the forward facing cylinder. It was pretty clean in there actually, as you would hope. So I finally done it, I bought myself a tools chest. This was uh, from eBay, US Pro Tools, I think it was £95. I thought for £95, why am I even messing around with a silly little toolbox? So there we go, new addition to the garage and uh, yeah, doesn't it look lovely? Doesn't it look beautiful? I've even got my LED lights set up now. So we've got the LED lights in Ducati colours at the moment. If we're doing a project on the H2, oh, yeah, a bit closer to the control box. There we go, we're now H2 colours. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. It's the little things, small minds and all that. So anyway, where was we? We were taking apart this motorcycle till I got sidetracked with making toolboxes. So what I'm going to do now is just uh, create some little blanks to block off those uh, inlets so we don't get any crap in there. And then we're going to finish stripping this bike down. Wheels off, forks off, back wheel out, maybe even uh, subframe off. Let's, get, let's break the back of this now.
tight. Well, there she is. We are finally getting there. I mean, I'd say that was pretty much broken the back of it. Well, I'd say we're halfway, probably. Forks are all out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to invest in a polishing machine, a buffing station. And I'm not going to, I'm probably not going to get these done in satin black now. I'm probably going to polish these up. Not mirror, but just sort of buffed up nicely. The top yoke as well. And then with the forks, I'm not going to go black. Like I said, I think I'm going to go either leave them so they're sort of they're little silvery gold. I want to go sort of full Olin's gold. So I may get these sent off done in an Olin's gold, which will look nice, I think. It's actually very difficult to decide on colour schemes. It's really difficult to know what to do. I mean, I've also been toying with going black on the engine, going black on the main engine body. You know, so with, with the gold Cerakote, and the black, it looks great together, but I'm probably gonna, because I've got the silver rear sets, the Sato rear sets, I'm probably gonna go silver on the engine and leave it sort of original. Black's a little bit dull, so I probably am gonna go silver on the engine. I may go black gloss on the subframe. Again, I'm not 100% decided. It's so difficult. It's really difficult. I need to do some Photoshop mock-ups of all the different colors together to see what I wanna go for because it is hard. I mean, if I was going black on the engine, I'd go black elsewhere, but I've got the silver rear set, so it needs some silver on it, but yeah, it's difficult to know what to do. It's difficult to know what to do. I've got some more brake lines coming. I've got some RNG bits and pieces also to go on the bike. I've got a quick shifter, heel tech quick shifter, and a heel tech gear indicator to go on. I think the next stage of the strip down I don't want to touch the bars, I want to leave the bars all intact because you know, there's nothing wrong, all these bars are like new, there's nothing wrong with any of this and all the wiring's rooted. So I want to try and, you know, take the bars off the yokes, I want to get the yokes off to polish them, but try and probably leave all the wiring on the frame as much as possible and then try and get the frame off of the engine. Obviously swinging arm off first, exhaust system off. I've also got a pink stool sorry not a pink stool an engine lift and a pink stool so i've got an engine lift which can go under the bike once the uh, exhaust's off to try and you know get it off of the abba stand put it on the engine lift once the swinging arms off once the shocks off once the exhaust's off and then see how easy it is to get the swing i've been told this is can be tricky to get this swinging arm spindle out to drop the swinging arm you need some pullers and threaded bar. So thanks for the chap who sent me the links to the video of how to make your own threaded bar to remove the swinging arm. So I'm, I'm dreading the swinging arm removal. I hope it's gonna come out easily, but I, I don't think this bike's been apart. Those forks were so tight to get out. I think this bike is, and all of the bolts have still got the, like the clear washer behind all of the fixings. I really don't think this bike has been apart ever. I think it's a very original bike. So it could be tricky to get that swinging arm out, but that's probably gonna be the next episode now. Probably the next episode. But there we go, that's it for now. Thanks again for your viewing and for your comments and everything. All the, I mean, I'm really surprised at the interest in this build. It's been fantastic. I really didn't, wasn't sure how these videos would go down, but they've been going down really well. So it gives me a real good bit of inspiration to carry on and, and like I say, try and get one of these out, maybe two out a week when I can. Keep your comments coming. Suggestions, ideas, I'm all ears. I've got quite big ears. See you later guys.